This is being recorded by Matt Conti at NorthernWaterfront.com, and the regional review is also here to report. And we're going to do some committee reports starting with Ryan Kenny, resident of the parking and traffic committee. <laughs> Unfortunately, Commissioner uh, Tinlin had another conflict this month, so he will not be showing up for the second consecutive meeting. Um, however, I don't know if people noticed, but finally, after about two years of petitioning the city, the uh, reserve parking signs have been changed throughout the north end. Um, they now say visitor parking and have the hours, and then underneath it says uh, resident sticker exemption. So if you want to park in a visitor spot beyond the two hour limit, you won't be ticketed. Um, the exception to that is, I don't believe they changed signs on Hanover Street, Salem Street, um, Prince Street, and Commercial Street. But all the other streets, signs should have been changed. Thank you, Ryan. Um, Dave, public safety? Uh, once again, as of the last public safety meeting, which was October 3rd, the crime stats are always based on the previous 30 days. So looking at the previous 30 days, compared to that same period a year ago. Larcenies, not including car breaks, went up by seven. Um, six more towed motor vehicles than before. Uh, we had one breaking and entering incident uh, that's down from six a year ago. And just to give you some highlights, there were five arrests. Um, a gentleman from Lowell, Massachusetts broke into a garage right around Snow Hill, Commercial, Whole Streets. Um, a 35-year-old from Linfield, Massachusetts was arrested. Um, I believe he had drugs on him at the very least. It was cocaine. Um, assault and battery on a police officer and trespassing. That was at 61 Prince Street. And a 21-year-old from the North End was arrested. He had heroin on him, and that was on Endicott Street. A couple, uh, there were three larcenies for motor vehicles, uh, 357 Commercial Street. The battery was stolen from a Honda scooter. Noise Place, a gentleman from Tewksbury, um, put a phone underneath, uh, I think he took a phone that was underneath the seat, and there was a larceny from the Hull Street Garage. Um, 13 larcenies, kind of all over the neighborhood, a little bit of everything. Um, gentleman was arrested on September 8th at 27 Charter Street. Um, a neighbor had viewed the whole incident, and uh, the gentleman was apparently homeless, 39 years old. He had bulk cutters with him. The top detectives already knew who he was. He had pills in his pocket as well. Last but not least, there was a robbery at the 7-Eleven. Um, gentleman had a knife and threatened a clerk, jumped over the counter, stole $5 and $10 bills. Then he left the store, and detectives at the time were reviewing surveillance cameras. One other thing I'll mention real quick, Captain Lee, as you may already know, has retired from the Boston Police Department and after surgery in the department for about 30 to 35 years. He accepted a police chief position down in Rhode Island, uh, a small town just north of Newport. His first day will be Monday. I stopped by at his uh, graduation, no, sorry, his retirement celebration earlier tonight, and Aaron Michael would stop by as well. And um, we wish him well. As always, the public safety meeting, unless otherwise told, he is the first Thursday of the month in this room at 6.30 p.m. Thank you. And uh, I'm, I'm gonna read the uh, Greenway report for John Pregman, who's not here, so. Uh, Greenway reports. October 31st, which is Halloween, from 11 to 7, um, all are encouraged to ride the Greenway Carousel in costume. The event will also partner with Boston Can Share from 4 to 7 p.m. And any donated can of food will qualify as an individual to be entered into a raffle for a chance for one of three Carousel 10 packs of tickets. Um, and as always, every Tuesday and Thursday until November 26th from 11.30 to 6 p.m. 11.30 a.m. to 6 p.m. in Dewey Square, and um, they have a uh, uh, farmer's market. You can pick up fresh seasonal produce and shop local at the farmer's market. This market has, has it all from fresh baked bread to organic meats. Um, and one more. And there are still plenty of opportunities to volunteer in the Greenway with uh, both the horticulture and program staff. Just go to www.rosekennedygreenway.org or email volunteer at rfkgc.org to sign up. Um, and they also had a uh, big uh, turnout for their National Public Lands Day. There were 70 volunteers in the park on Saturday, September 28th to help with a variety of projects, including planting replacement plants in the Wharf District, resurfacing stone dust paths in the North End, and cleaning pavers along the Mother's Walk. 
So that's the Greenway report. And we have one special guest over quickly. Julia is here from the Elliott School. She's the head of the development over there, and she wanted to just say a few words, so I want to just give her about five minutes. Thank you. Hi, everybody. My name is Julia Mayer. I started at the Elliott uh, a little over a month ago as the Director of Development and External Relations. Um, I'm afraid that I can't stay for the whole meeting, which is why I asked to speak here right at the beginning. Um, but I wanted to introduce myself and to share some of the exciting news that's been, that we've gotten at the Elliott recently. Um, as some of you may have read, we got our test scores back from last year, and the Elliott, which was a failing school in 2007 when Principal Tracy Walker Griffith took it over, um, was the top school in the city in English language arts and the second school in the city in math. Our sixth grade students actually brought in the top scores in the state in math, which was really exciting. Um, so we're seeing this tremendous achievement growth, but we're also seeing tremendous growth at the Elliott. Um, in 2007, we were serving about 150 students. Now it's close to 400, um, which is why we have the second space. So you probably see our students walking back and forth between the two spaces um, as we're figuring out how to use each building. Um, so I wanted to introduce myself to share some of that news and to also let everybody know that we're going to be kicking off a Friends of the Elliott campaign um, here in the North End. Um, when I started, I sent a survey out to teachers and I asked them what's the one thing that you know you really need in your classroom and I would say 90% of them got back to me and said the thing I need the most is more books. So this year we're gonna raise money to build a book room so that um, students who want to read have the opportunity to because we certainly never want to dampen their love of reading and of literature you know, this early in life just because we can't provide books at their level. Um, so you'll start to see, hopefully, me around the neighborhood. I see a bunch of faces I don't know, which is great. Um, and you know, please stop me and introduce yourself, and um, you know, come visit us at the Elliott. We'd be happy to show everybody to show you around if you haven't been inside the school yet. Um, so thank you for having me tonight. Thank you, Julia. Does anyone have any questions for Julia? She's raising money for the Elliott School, which is a fantastic school. <laughs> Can I say, can you can say whatever you want, John. Uh, the uh, Monica's is holding the fourth or fifth uh, fundraiser for the Elliott School, November 12th. Uh, tickets are for sale. They're available through the restaurant. Uh, you can call and make reservations. Um, or you can reach us at uh, gmonicasal.com. Uh, it's a great event. We, you can meet all the parents there. We were fortunate enough to have a bunch of folks that work at City Hall, City Reps, uh, State Rep, uh, our Musk, which was there also. Uh, the mayor sent uh, one of his uh, people last year. So it's a great place to meet the families that are sending their kids to the Elliott School. It's a great opportunity to contribute to all that great stuff that's been taking place for the last uh, six, seven years. So thank you, Julia. Thank you. And if anybody would like to get in touch with me as well, my email address is jmayer, M-A-Y-E-R, 2 at bostonpublicschools.org. So thank you very much. Out the agenda number six is 422 Hanover Street. <coughs> Mark Margos Seligman, is that right? Is that yes, right? Right five. The zoning had failed to change the legal occupancy of the property from four residential apartments in a restaurant to five residential apartments and expand the proposed first floor apartments living space into the basement. It used to be a really awesome restaurant called the Blue Front there. <laughs> <laughs> For those guys who remember it, right? Well, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Dan Toscano, uh, attorney at law, Mr. President, you have I represent uh, Margo Selegman, who's president here in the Nazaro Center, and we thank you for the opportunity to present this proposal. We're respectfully requesting your support tonight to change the legal occupancy of this property. Currently, there are four residential units in one uh, restaurant space, which was formerly used at the Blue Front Tavern many years ago. Um, these are condo units, and Margo Homes the first floor condo unit. We want to change that to a residential unit. It's going to be a two-bedroom uh, residential unit, 1,200 square feet. We're using occupying some space in the basement, approximately 500 <coughs> square feet in the basement. Upstairs is close to 800 square feet. The total square footage is approximately, as you can see on your sheets that I passed out, which gives you um, a, a layout of the floor plan is approximately 1,255 square feet. Um, there are a number of violations that exist, which is one is the off-street parking, uh, then the other one is open space in the uh, FAR. Some standard violations that we commonly see when we change uh, 
from this to residential units or create res residential units. The important thing about this particular location and this site, this is going to be owner occupied for Margo. Margo plans on moving in once once the, the construction is complete. We do have our ZBA hearing uh, coming up on October the 22nd at 10:30 at City Hall. Um, construction uh, the design is, hasn't been complete yet, but the, what we plan that the difference is going to be what you see now is the entrance is on Hanover Street is now going to be moved into Falcon Place. The entrance is going to be on Falcon Place, and the front of that uh, residential unit is going to be made up of some windows that the design really hasn't been. Uh, Done yet? Uh, local contractor has been hired. Uh, Del Russo's uh, contractor company has been hired to to work with Margo in terms of selecting the design. Um, and simply put, I, I, I think uh, this particular location to change from a restaurant to residential. Uh, I, did, I sent out notifications to over 100 people in that particular area. Have not heard any opposition to that uh, to, to the request. So. I'm here to answer any questions uh, about the particular, any particulars that you may have. Anyone have any questions? Pretty. When do you expect construction to commence? Well, as of right now, we're, we're waiting until we get approval from the ZBA and go through the design review process. And once we're done with the design review, uh, review process, and we'll start construction. So I, I say, and then we have the whole appeal process um, with the ISD. So we'll hopefully uh, the beginning of the year. Okay, how long do you think the construction process will take? Is it going to be a dumpster occupying uh, street space on Hanover? As of right now, it's been it's been occupied as retail space. Uh, there's not much that has to be gutted out because it's just really an open floor plan. Um, don't know if I mean it may be a dumpster. I don't think so. Uh, knowing Della, that's a question that I've talked to Michael about. Is Della Russo Construction has his own dump truck and so you know, are probably occupied. I can't imagine gotten that place if it needs to be more than a day. Okay. You know. Anyone else? Thank you. Any questions in the audience? <coughs> no, they need to put it on their agenda anymore. This is, a, this is an issue that, you know, as you mentioned, that I, I've been before the zoning license and construction subcommittee. Um, I was elected not to put this on the agenda because there was no opposition to this particular um, petition. So, what was your ZBA date again? October 22nd, which is Tuesday, 10:30. Still make a motion. Sure, go ahead. Make a motion to change the legal occupancy of the property currently located at 422-424 Hanover Street from four residential apartments and restaurants to five residential apartments. And ex to expand the proposed first floor apartments living space into the basement. Anyone second the motion? I second. second. So, motion on the floor by David, second by Ralph to uh, <coughs> change the legal occupancy from four residential apartments and the restaurant to five residential apartments and expand first floor apartment so living space into the basement. All in favor? Okay. Unanimous. Tony, Tony, we choose this off. I'm sorry. All set. Good job. Congratulations. Thank you. 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 Thank Two bedroom, two bath. 
and pretty much that's it. Um, as it stands now, there are five bedrooms and two, three bathrooms. So we'd be adding one bathroom and um, taking away a bedroom. So. Well, con the condo association, con association couldn't make it tonight, but they're they're behind us. We have to them all. This this condominium association isn't 37 charters. It's four dash six. Four to six henchmen, but okay. it's the legal address is 37 charters. So okay. the city has required us to okay. file under that address. Just clarifying that. Oh, so it's sorry. Four four six henchmen street. Yep. Better known as four to six henchmen street. Yeah. We have our own en entrance doorways. Um, we don't affect the association in any way, and like we said, we. We have their full approval, <coughs> as well as the other association, the other council that's in the north end. So. You went to the zoning and licensing? Um, yep, we had gone to them. They went, they, you're not going on their agenda either, right? They, yeah. We had already gone to their agenda, so we passed. Okay. Yeah, I powers. think that they actually voted to not vote. Yes. So, yes. Um, pretty straightforward, guys. Um, does anyone have any questions? Can you um, identify the folks? Oh, sorry, there. my name is Philomena. Honestly, I would have preferred not to put either one of you on, but we just put you on to kind of. Sorry. Not ZBA hearing. Oh, November twelfth. November twelfth. Yes. Anyone want to make a motion? Yeah. 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 Y
Mayor's Office of Consumer Affairs and Licensing number 28. That's it. Anyone have any questions? No. None? Anyone in the audience have any questions? I have a statement though, it's a technicality that's affecting us all. You know, the city should get their uh, act together and put the times together. You, you know, you can't sleep your serving beer till two. The folks that are watching the TV want to watch it till two and not stop at one. It's really a no brainer. So But it's all it's the inspection certificates. Yes. It's it's been Seven sort of a pain that you know, citizens don't for every little thing they can't. We went through it last year. We have the same situation. Motion. I'll make a motion to support the um, the license uh, transfer uh, to 2 a.m. The um, is it called an entertainment license? Yes. From no, no. 1 a.m. to 2 a.m. Second and second, second motion. Maria seconds the motion to support uh, the extended licensed hours for the non live entertainment at 6 Prince Street, uh, 2 restaurant to 2 a.m. All in favor? Ten zero. Good. Thank you, Seth. Might as well stay there. Oh, yeah, I just uh, materials. It's tough. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> that was tough. That was great. And the last, uh, the last is number nine, two Mechanic Street, Frankie Pasquale has purchased the restaurant formerly Ida's and applied for a transfer of the malt and wine license with the addition of cordials and expansion of service to a proposed 48 seat seasonal outdoor dining patio. Closing hours will remain at midnight, seven days. First, uh, Frank DePasquale and his family are seated here at the end. Uh, his son is the daughter and his wife uh, are here tonight and represent uh, the family. And uh, as you know, Frank is not only a business owner in the neighborhood, four restaurants, uh, pasta shop, Red Bakery. Uh, he also uh, lives in 44 Prince uh, with his wife and uh, daughter, and uh, very active, needless to say, in the community. I have some photos that I'm going to use in conjunction with what you have. If you look uh, first at the longer one, you, you'll have a sense of what this is. I don't even realize this was there until I went back to Frank one day when he was in the process of buying this. He purchased uh, one of three buildings in the body property from the Bruno family that operated Dida's restaurant for many, many years. I'm not even exactly sure how many, but I know it's well before most of our time. Uh, the property I find out later was uh, originally owned by Gabe Pivanti, who was an attorney and city council and sort of next door of this area. One of the areas associated with the proposal for the restaurant used to be uh, referred to as his Rose Garden. Uh, doesn't exactly look like a Rose Garden today, as you'll see from the photographs, but uh, it's uh, an area in the back, when you look at the longer pieces, the, if you start those working down, they're different. Uh, the, uh, the property sort of has a key shape and then a triangular open area uh, that's at the rear of the property and is uh, divided by a wall a chain link fence that you'll see in the photographs from the cut of uh, the tunnel exit. So directly behind this uh, is the tunnel exit. On the other side of that is uh, the property next to and including what is now going to be the not Benjamin Industrial School, used to be the police station, it used to be the, uh, the, the tunnel administration building, and so forth, uh, which is on the other side of the cut, the so called opening for the tunnel. Uh, when you, you, you look at the photos and you look at those plans, what you see is that these buildings are all uh, rear buildings. They're, they don't face out onto Hanover Street. To access the buildings, uh, you walk down the mechanics. Street, which is that alleyway next to uh, uh, on one side is uh, Dolce Vita uh, restaurant, and on the other side is uh, the building that the Bruno's continue to own right in the corner where the sign that says I is, is located. And, and that alleyway uh, is the entry area that you use to go into both the restaurant, uh, 
uh, which is at the rear portion of the building, and you go around that corner, and you can enter into uh, the residential portion of two of the buildings, which is sometimes referred to as Mechanics Court, as opposed to Mechanic Street. And then it leads, at the very end, to uh, what is Board Alley, which is the alley that uh, separates where Tresca is from <coughs> where Rico is on the other side, where Frank has uh, the uh, Panatiera. Did I say that right? Uh, in the back. So uh, there's an entrance to that building in what is called 11 Board Alley. So th these were all our rear, what we call rear buildings that separated from the street. Uh, years ago, all of those alleyways connected. So you could go from uh, mechanics uh, to board, and then you could go the other way, all the way to Knott Street before they put the tunnel in. Uh, so those were all sort of interconnected small alleyways. Frank, in purchasing this, has purchased uh, the restaurant as well as the real estate. Uh, and the real estate, uh, as mentioned, was three residential buildings. Um, we're here now uh, because of the fact that by purchasing that, he has to transfer ownership of the restaurant uh, and the license to the restaurant uh, to him, even before he starts working on the residential components of the building. The building will be renovated <coughs> as he goes along, but he has to start the transfer process because the rooms have closed on the restaurant now that they have uh, given up ownership. The restaurant for, uh, again, people who are not familiar, I gave you a second plan, which is is this one, this is a little larger size. So if you come down mechanics, as I mentioned, and there's a front entrance to Ida's restaurant as it exists today. Ida's restaurant as it exists today has 26 seats inside uh, in one dining room and the kitchen is to the rear of that. The proposal that uh, we have in terms of transferring ownership will include renovating the restaurant entirely uh, and doing two additional things. One is it currently has a uh, wine, uh, beer and wine license, and we've requested to have the beer and wine license include uh, the service of cordials. Uh, the second thing we're requesting is in this area that hopefully you've been able to see by now in those, uh, those photographs, uh, to put an outdoor seasonal patio when you look at the drawing, what the dotted line is showing you is an awning that will go over part of that patio. Uh, the area now is used for uh, trash storage, uh, motorcycle parking. Uh, there are a couple of uh, grills back here that some tenants apparently own. Uh, there's a cement uh, table with an umbrella and sort of other uh, individual things. More importantly is there's a drain uh, that's in the back that's been a constant problem uh, that will be part of the repairs in this, this area. It's been a source of some problems with rodents and so on and so forth. Uh, um, it has the potential of being very garden-like in the back. I know it sounds odd, but it is, as I said, in speaking to uh, the attorney that used to work with Gabe Camonti, Monty was proud of the fact that he got roses to grow in the back. He had roses out there for many years, apparently, and used to enjoy having his lunch out there. Um, the concept that Frank has in mind at the moment is uh, being referred to as uh, Rico al Fresco, uh, with the thought process being that it would be simple, uh, it would be light foods, uh, it would be an area, especially in the summertime, where uh, people can come and have something light sit outside in a garden setting um, and have uh, everything starting with uh, breakfast items uh, which will be produced at the bread shop, um, lunch, and then ultimately uh, dinner in the evening. So it, it will be a three meal service. Uh, it will principally be on the outside, uh, as you see from the seating, uh, to give it the sense of being in the courtyard uh, 
he will own all of the surrounding property, uh, simply meaning that uh, those properties will be renovated, they will be apartments, um, they will be tenants of Frank at the same time, uh, simply meaning it would be a little easier under the circumstances to deal with uh, the various situations. Uh, the removal of all that trash uh, will be replaced by a very sophisticated trash compactor, relatively small, that Frank has already uh, been looking at so that he doesn't have to store uh, trash for any amount of time uh, in an area adjacent. Uh, you will see also that he's preserving some additional area in the back, about half of uh, the back area is for the, uh, the restaurant, it lines up directly with the restaurant, and the other half will continue to be an area that uh, tenants, etc., can continue to use, uh, especially during the day if they wish to sit out or, or go into uh, the cafe. So that's the general concept. Uh, as I'm saying, uh, we have no plans to give you, to show you what's gonna happen with the residential units, because we haven't gone that far. As I say, we have our kind of a little bit in front of the horse here, simply because we have to go to the licensing board, uh, because there's a renewal process that starts in November to answer why Ida's is a closed restaurant and has been transferred in ownership. So uh, we are asking your support for the transfer. We're asking your support to be able to add cordials to service we're asking your support to have the outdoor seating for uh, seasonal uh, al fresco dining. So this is exclusively for the business the building. When you do the work for the building, you may change occupancy at that time. So this is just for Ida's. You just said that you just said that we don't know what we're going to do with the apartment yet. Oh no! So what, you what I mean, we know, road, right? we know they're going to be renovated. Yeah. It, 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 that's what I mean. So in other words, we know they're going to be renovated. The renovation for the restaurant will be included in the same application. So we don't have the plans we have on the preliminary plan showing you the layout. So when, <clears throat> when they're working on the plans to uh, redo the apartments, they, they'll also include plans to uh, thin out the restaurant. But this is what it will be. In other words, that's, the restaurant's not expanding on the interior part of the building. All right. This is a purchase of one building, right? Three. Three. Okay. Now two. Board Alley is that is that two. where is that two. where is that where you make the bread? Two. Board Alley is where you make the bread. Is that two friends? I thought it was three. Oh, no. it's, well, it has three. Uh, it has three it addresses. Has, it has three addresses. Okay. It may, in fact, actually be two buildings. It's I'm now sorry. this all this all connects to the other alley where you make the bread, right? So you can come. You can basically come all the way through. Uh, no, just look at the plan. Yeah, the the answer is it's been closed off in the past, but it's going to be reopened. There's a chain link fence that that blocks going from this backyard into uh, Board Alley. And there's a question about whether that chain link fence should have been there because it's supposed to be passageway. Wait, on the Cannon Street side or on the other side? It's on, it's on the, the side close to Board Alley, the very, okay. very rear. Okay. Uh, in other words, but now that's not you, you, you see this right here? Yep. Okay, there's, right now there's a piece of chain link okay. that goes across, but that's traditionally been passageway okay. between mechanic and, and Board. How are you planning to have the tenants exit? Are you planning to have them exit to the alley towards your Brinko building? Like when you have the restaurant outside, will they be exiting through your restaurant, through your patio? You have entrances to the property? Currently, there's, a, there's an entrance on Board Alley that access, accesses uh, one half of the building. Uh, whatever design. How many units are in there now, though? 16, so how many, how many uh, it's uh, 11, 11 in the restaurant. In which yeah. one? In, in the combined, combined. All together? Combined, all together. Yeah, they, uh, yeah four, the, the, the brewers always, always treat this uh, as one property, even though they're separate buildings. It's, it's been held as one trust, one but, property. But there's one stairwell in the middle of that, this building, right? There's, there's a stairwell, uh, if you can look, there's a stairwell here. How many units use that so The one that comes from the backyard. In other words, the, the staircase that's in the middle of the building. Yes, seven. Seven use that one, and four use seven the one in Board Alley. And then there's four on the other side. Yeah, my question is this, you know, since you have the restaurant here, you know, this is Mechanics Alley, the restaurant's here. 
you could actually have your tenants exit out both to, ways, to yeah. both ways yeah. but both predominantly ways. to the other side while you're running your business. And just so that you know that I put that, that fence over there because it was such a rodent uh, uh, infestation coming from that area. And so we put a double fence over there and we did all wire lag. That's the only reason that fence is there. Mm -hmm. They're going to take it down now. I'll take it down after we do the pest mm -hmm. extermination that we have to do back there. Because that is the tunnel. And that's where it's all happened from. I built the tunnel. Do you have to get like some permission from Mass Dodd or anything? Right up against. We're not building. We're not putting anything. But I mean, somebody could throw a beer bottle or something. I mean, you can't do that. It's whole thing. It has a. What is a chain link fence in the pictures? Yeah. Will be uh, covered by plantings and vines, so you won't be able to see it, and you'll keep that same height. The, the height of it right now, I think, is eight feet. So you have a, a raised area, like a wall, then you have an eight foot chain link on top of that. Uh, we're gonna plant in there so that you don't see the chain link and you don't see into the tunnel. So it's not likely to be able to toss it things over. So we're, you think you're gonna get a little trash compactor so you're not gonna have totes? Well, we were thinking again, you know, we were looking at this trash compact, it's a newest thing out, you know, it's almost like the big belly that's mm -hmm. out there, but it's a gigantic, uh, sort of the size of this door, all right? And then you just take the bottom piece out, and it, it, the, the trash trucks come pick it up and just, just take it and you put it right back in again. It's the newest thing, it's fantastic. And see, what's seasonal? Seasonal is April to October, correct? Well, seasonal, uh, you know, well, this what Frank will tell you is that he will attempt, it's like any of the others, to use it as much as you can, weather permitting, meaning you can't use it in the rain, you can't use it in the snow. Uh, you know, will the canopy have a heater no, in it? No, we haven't the, gone that far. The city, the city council, uh, two close. years ago, right? They it's they allowed for any um, any um, outdoor seating to be year round, uh, and then you had to go in front of the licensing board, which which I've already been a part of it, and then they'll allow it. Now, whether it's seasonal or whether it's year-round, I don't know, but it's all uh, according to weather. Are you, are you you plan on covering it like you do on Palmetto Street? No, not at all. Not at all. It's, uh, I, I saw this, uh, this new, uh, it's almost like what Fury has. It's this new thing from Italy that, Jack no, it's, it's just, um, it's just uh, remote control and it just covers it. Um, and it's just on some two poles. And it's, it's almost like the Fury. The Fury. Outside. What is the plan on the Fury? Uh, what is the plan if, um, if there's a fire? And can the fire truck get back and through the patio? Yes, the yes they can. From, uh, from the, the mechanic, mechanic uh, way there. Yeah, mechanic is the only uh, access. fire access. Yeah. It still is. It won't be, won't be blocked. What about fire doors for the building? Well, the, those won't be blocked off by the patio? No. no. Uh, the, the building is, uh, when we say fire doors, you're talking the egress doors. Yeah. Uh, uh, the building's egress allows it, as uh, you've heard, to go in both directions. So when you come out of, normally if you would come out of the board alley uh, exit, you would go up board alley. If you couldn't, for some reason, go up board alley, you will now be able to go through the back and out to mechanic and then vice versa. So the building that empties into this courtyard can go in either direction. It can either go by means of mechanic street or the building put out. Can I ask one question? This little spot that's right here, is, is this part of this pasta shop? No, that's the alley. So you're, 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 you're reading. Yeah. Is that the back? Like, you know is that what I'm saying? No. The, this you see where she's reading building? That's just right there. Yeah. Um, no, is that no? It's it, his bakery is over here. Yeah. But well, what is this? That's, that that's, that's going to that that's going to be that that is assumed that that will be in the future the pasta shop that's now on Cross Street. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just to let you know on the um, the fire uh, question. <laughs> Uh, the whole building is going to be sprinkled. It's all going to be allowed. And there's a, if you saw in the pictures, the hood system doesn't go up to the roof. 
which I, I promise that the hood system will go, you know, according to uh, this. Yeah. The correct. Correct. Well, right. Yeah, that's, that's a little bit of work. But it's yeah. going to go up to the roof as, as they, they should. So how can you not use the whole space? Yeah, but it's going to be contiguous to the restaurant. So we're just going to keep that space that's contiguous to the restaurant. So it's part of the dining for the restaurant. All right, so one more question. So there's, there's, there's where Ida's is, right? Yep. So when you walk down McCann Street, you enter Ida's on the left. But when the blue nose go home, do they go in the back and around, or do no. they enter no, the, from the restaurant? Right in the front. They the rules right are actually the front. in that front building. Okay. Now, when you come around, one more question. Maybe two. When you come around, when you come around the back, so it says right here. So see, see on the plan, Billy, on your left is the restaurant, and then on the right it says apartment. Apartment stair and entry. Yes, that's like two separate buildings. The staircase is in the middle, right? Right. The, the plan on the floor of that just to read me, it's going to stay, those are going to stay apartments. The yes, other building. that's exactly not the way it is. Okay. Yes. All right. And that's where you said there were seven units, right? Seven, seven and four. Seven and four. Seven okay. Seven and four. Is this at the old tech? And they're all in this one building? This? No, it's, it's private own property. property. All right. Okay. This, this is not tenant land, there's no. Yeah, yeah. So if, we, so if you look at that the, longer, oh, this is the one that's sitting in front of the so that's a private way. That, that's therefore no pay. No, private way. the back is private. Period. Okay. Yeah, that's private, I mean. private property. Okay. And it's it part has, of the parcel with the building. Yeah, it has, it has uh, uh, passage rights uh, for abutting properties to go through the back. You know, etc. As I was describing it before, uh, these were originally alleyways, etc. So uh, his ownership goes to the wall. But the, the public act. Uh, egress or whatever still has to go through the seating area? Uh, emergency emergency passage can go through the seating area. Right. Okay. What, what do you have to leave for that? What do you have to leave for that? For uh, it, it, as long as you don't block the key people, it'd be similar to what you need in the restaurant. Okay. So people can literally like, just walk through there? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Anyone else have any other questions? I have one. I have one more question. Is, is um, is everything this is the same is that, is, one question. No, 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 no. So everything okay with La Dolce Vita? Because I know there's historically been a problem with, with uh, people in Ice and La Dolce Vita and I've, the I've and Mark. I told them the plans, and I've, I've already discussed it with them. And, and I talked to them today, but I, I, I just, I don't know. They think they own the driveway, and then Ida thinks they own the driveway. Just no, like, it's beyond my control. I just want to make sure it's everything's historic. okay. The driveway is historic. <laughs> Is it private, the driver? Yeah, yeah, it is. So Frank so has signed now the sign for the rest of my well, well, that's that's like the change. Change. If you look at the driver, it's heavy divided. Tastefully, like your other yes. signage. Exactly. Ian asked about signage. I'm, I'm sorry. I said Ian asked about mm -hmm. uh, Frank is hoping, the Ida sign is, is sort of historic and unique. So he was hoping to maintain the sign in some fashion, but it'll say uh, break all fresco. Yeah. Uh, so if, if you look at the old sign that's there, that's he'd like to keep it. And it's an agreement that he has to have with the Brunos who continue to own that building and the sign. So uh, that that would be the plan because you won't be able to see it from in the alleyway. No, I understand that. But he said it was going to be done tastefully. Yeah. And it, it's, yeah. I mean, it's it's been there you know, my entire lifetime, so you know, it's kind of just a piece. Time. Can I just say something? Yes. We haven't taken a vote yet, but personally speaking, I know we have a lot of questions and concerns, and we've gotten a lot of answers. I think whatever Frankie has done, I, I think he's done a superb job. I mean, uh, everything he's done, any restaurant he's opened has elegance to it, and uh, I, I think that whatever he's going to do with Ida's, I think he'll do a good job. That's my opinion. Again, the Frank's property speak for themselves. Yeah. If you look at those pictures, or you take a walk through that alley, these the buildings I don't think it's been painted or repainted. We don't ask questions. Years, you know, so, uh, they're greatly in need of repair. So. Um, anyone in the audience have any questions about anything pertaining to them tonight? Just what we're going to do about it.
because we want to kind of separate some of the issues. We're going to vote on the transfer of uh, beer and wine for the closing time to stay at 12. And we're going to vote on the addition of cordials and then we're going to vote on the outdoor seating. Is that okay? You don't have a choice. Do it, Mr. Chair. <laughs> so, does, that, does, does anyone want to? Um, what we're going to do is we're going to vote first on the transfer of the um, of the malt and wine license in the closing hours remaining um, midnight seven days. I like the motion. Yeah, it's going to be separate. What's that, Phil? I'll make a motion uh, to support the transfer of the malt and wine license at the remaining midnight closing hour. Second. So I have a motion to. Uh, I have a question um, before I do that. Yep. Would uh, midnight be the closing hour for the patio too? Uh, to my knowledge, I'm going to say no uh, because the city yes. uh, has has a close eleven o'clock closing on outdoor patios. There are some grandfather patios that close later than that. Anything I've seen in the last five years uh, has had eleven o'clock closing. That's our expectation of the city. So there was a motion, Phil made a motion to um, transfer the malt and wine license um, with the closing out to remain midnight seven days a week. Tony second in the motion. All in favor? Unanimous. So 10 0 on the, on the um, beer and wine. And then does anyone want to make a motion on the additional cordials, which is pretty, pretty basic? I'll make a motion. Okay, bro. Add cordials to the existing beer and wine list. Anyone second the motion? Second the motion. There's a motion to um, add cordials to the existing beer and wine. Seconded by Tony. All in favor? 10 0. 2 for 2. And the last one is um, is the expansion of service to a proposed 48 seat seasonal outdoor dining patio. I'll make a motion. Good idea. I'll make a motion to support the expansion of service at the at the aforementioned location to a proposed 48 seat seasonal outdoor dining patio closing hour every night seven days. No, the outside but the, 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 sorry, just the patio the expectation is that it will be a little bit based on past precedents established by the city of Boston. Thank you. I'll second. So there's a motion to expand service to a proposed 48 seat seasonal outdoor dining patio. Um, and the, um, all in favor. Seven. All opposed? Three. Seven, three. Three, three. Good job, Billy. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you.